Hello. Uh, beginning our lesson today in Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. We'll probably go down to verse um, number 16 today for our lesson. Uh, Philippians 3, 10 through 16. <clears throat> Paul says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I, not my, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Uh, we see here, uh, if you look at verse 9, which maybe I should have started there to begin, we, uh, but Paul says in verse 9 that to be found in him, talking about his goal, in this portion of scripture, his goal was to be found in Christ. Uh, when P Paul wanted, when people uh, looked at him and thought about him, that that Paul would be in Christ, that he, the people would see Christ in Paul. And it says, "They're not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law." So Paul wanted to be draped in Christ and have Christ being all that all that his life um, was for. And so we see here in verse ten, he continues that thought. And he says that I may know him. Um, a recent study I, I did, I uh, we did here last uh, last this past week with another group of people. Um, we was we was talking about how uh, people, and I say people, some people they get saved, they know that Christ died for them, they know they're saved by grace through faith, and that's it. That's all they've that's all they've really ever attained to. That's all they've really they've never really matured from that point. They've really never understood the cost of salvation and the cost of stewardship, the cost of discipleship. Um, but Paul here says that I may know him. Now, when we think about Paul, we think about him being the greatest missionary that we could imagine. And yet Paul's goal, even at, toward the end of his life here, was that he may know Christ, that he may know him deeper and come to know him deeper and to know more about him. And it says there in verse 10 also, and the power of his resurrection, Paul still at this point in his life, still felt like there was much more to Christ that he could learn and know about that he had yet not not uh, gained that knowledge or that that experience. Paul says, I want to, I want to know him and the fellowship of his sufferings, being, being made conformable unto his death. Paul wanted more of Christ, and that should be our goal. We should never be satisfied to think that we know everything that we know, we, or that we could know about Christ, or that we could know about salvation, that we could know about the ways of God. We should always be trying to attain more knowledge and more experience in the work of the Lord and what He has done for us and what He is doing for us. It says there, verse 11, If by any means I may unto the, attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul wants to live the remainder of his life trying to attain that resurrection of his body, that resurrection where he will go into uh, the presence of God himself when he, uh, uh, at his final death, that the, he may attain to the resurrection of the dead. He's going to continue to fight to know Christ even more all the way to the end. Paul says in verse 12, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend for that which also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Paul, again, uh, kind of repeats himself here, I believe, and he, he says, I have not yet attained everything that Christ has for me. I have not yet attained everything that God wants me to do. I have not yet attained um, my final uh, job. And, uh, you know, we, we know that, that Paul worked for Christ all the way up until his death. Here he's in prison. Uh, we do know that he got out of prison at this point, but he got back, he was sent back to prison um, uh, after this, after this was over, or after this, um, uh, his his uh, release here, but but Paul again, continually looking forward to knowing more of Christ. I keep repeating myself, but I keep thinking about about Paul's ambition here. I've not already attained. I've not I've not yet reached the pinnacle, but I'm looking for it. I continue to strive for it, 
And he says in verse 13, I count myself not to have apprehended. I know that I haven't reached what God wants me to reach. I know that I haven't gotten and done what all that God wants me to do. And that's what he's saying there in verse 13. But I forget those things which are behind. I'm leaving my past behind. The things that I've done in the past really don't matter for the future. And he says there, I'm reaching forward to those things which are before or ahead of me. I'm looking forward to the things that God has for me. I'm not resting on my past laurels. I'm not resting on my past work. I'm not resting on, on the things I did last year or, or 10 years ago. Uh, I think sometimes people have small victories and, and they're just happy with that. And so they don't really ever try to attain or try to do any more than what they had already done uh, in previous uh, time. But Paul here says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm, I'm letting those things go, and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me. What else can I do for God? And if you look, again, you look back in verse 10, he says, that I may know him. And Paul thinks, or Paul knows, that the only way he can really get to know Christ in a more deeper uh, fashion is to continually strive for what's in front of him. Continue to strive to do more than what he's done. He's not resting on his laurels. He's not He's not content to know that he started all these churches uh, that we read about in the New Testament. He's not content to know that, that he, he saw many converts. He's pressing on. He's pressing forward. We ought to do the same. We shouldn't rest on the things we did uh, when we helped in Bible school in 2012. We shouldn't just rest on that. We should be striving to be more like Christ and to do more for Christ not as a way to earn our salvation or to keep our salvation. I think that's already clear that that's not, that's not the, the reason for our work. But the reason for our work is that we may know Christ deeper and know Christ more. Verse 14, Paul says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark, the things that God has for me, the things that God has prepared for me. And ultimately, I press towards my glorified body in the future when I get to heaven and out of the sin sick world and the sin the sin sick body that I have. I press toward the mark. I've got Christ, but I'm pressing forward. I'm moving forward and not resting on my laurels and the things that I did. Verse 15, let us therefore as many as be perfect. Now this isn't necessarily meaning a perfection, but those of us that have set our mind toward being more uh, Christ-like and, and trying to learn more of Christ. That's what he's talking about there. Let us, therefore, as many as are striving to do better, be thus minded. And if any thing be yet otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So uh, Paul's hope here was that, that, those, that those Christians that have set their mind to press forward and to continue the work, that they would be, uh, that they would be um, thus minded, that they would be like-minded, that they would have the same goals and that they would strive forward for the betterment of themselves and the betterment of their church. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. So Paul's prayer here was that those that would that would maybe get sidetracked in the work, that would, they would get sidetracked off of the of this uh, goal seeking uh, that that Paul set forth, that God would would show them that, and that God would show them that where they're off track and where they need to um, to do better. Verse 16, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. So those of us or those of you that that um, are pressing forward, that are moving forward, that are that are trying with God's help to do better and to do the work of the Lord, um, uh, Paul Paul's hope here is that we would walk by the same rule, that we would walk by the same the same ideals, the same goals, the same uh, uh, goals that. Uh, that, that we've set before here, uh, reading in verses 13 and 14. Uh, not resting on our laurels and moving ahead so that we may know Christ and know the power of his resurrection and what Christ has for us. Not looking back, not thinking about the things that we have done for Christ, but the things that we can do. And I think uh, as, we, as we read this portion of scripture and we see that even at the end of Paul's life, at the end of where Paul... Uh, where a lot of us may just give up because, well, the circumstances aren't, aren't ideal. Paul was still pressing forward. Paul was still looking forward to knowing more of Christ. And we need to do that too. We should not rest on the things that we've done. Uh, I struggle a little bit with this. I pray that you would uh, help uh, or that you'd pray for me uh, as, I, as I try to go through this book of Philippians. I'm trying to be an encouragement. But uh, I hope that uh, you've seen here in these, in these verses today, in this lesson today, that that we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't let up. 
we shouldn't be comfortable in what we do know, but strive to know more of Christ and the things that he's done for us. I thank you for watching.